Matthew chapter 6. We're going to continue on with the Lord's Prayer, or what people call the Lord's Prayer. It was a pattern of how we should pray, what our priorities are. And if we really hear what is in this outline that the Lord gives the disciples, um, we'll find our prayers will be answered a lot more than what, the, what they have been. And it starts in verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven. Most people, when they read that, all they think about is how to honorably approach God. They don't get what Jesus is really saying. He's saying God is our Father. That was not a concept under the law. Because sin had separated us from God. God was not considered our Father. He was considered our God. We were His servants. Israel was called the people of God. But nowhere in their concept was God their father. Jesus introduced that. Because when Jesus made the statement to the Pharisees and he said he referred to God as his father. The Pharisees said you make yourself out to be God. Because they know each kind brings forth after its own kind. And if God is his father, that makes Jesus what his father is. Deity. God. Not merely human. And so they were ready to stone him. Well now, when he's teaching us to pray... He's saying, pray this way, our Father, who art in heaven. If God is our Father, that means we are his offspring. We're not mere human beings anymore, and what we were, you know, the the, 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 the sinner, the failure, the one who could never measure up, whatever we were, he nailed that to the cross. When he said, it is finished, that was our death. The human died. We were then reconciled to God by His action so that when we believe what He has done, His Word is His seed and it produces a new creature after His kind. That which is born of flesh is flesh. When our mothers and our fathers came together, we were the result Amen? In the same way, when the Spirit of God come into us, how, how many know then we were born of that Spirit and became His offspring? Oh, hallelujah. We are His offspring. How does his seed come to us? Well, in the parables, 
Matthew chapter 13. I'm not going to read there. But in Matthew chapter 13, remember the sower went out to sow seed. Some fell in, uh, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and snatched up the seed before it could penetrate into the earth. Nothing was produced. Amen. Then there was some seed that was sown in stony ground. It started to produce, but because there was some rocks there, what was sown there withered up. Then, uh, you know, there was a seed that was sown among the tares, the weeds. The weeds choked it out. But then there was a seed that was sown in good ground. Amen? 30, 60, and 100 fold. Well, the disciples had no idea what Jesus was talking about. I mean, there were, th th this was not, there were, these stories didn't exist in the Bible. They never heard them, you know, what are you saying? And remember, Jesus told them, he said, he preached in parables so that the multitudes wouldn't understand him. And he said, but it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Why was it given to them? Because they came back and they sought after it. Amen. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Now I know God's predestined plan had all that was all, was involved in that but how many know God knows our response and so it's those who are going to respond to his word those who are going to seek him that he's going to reveal his scriptures to and so then he began to say the earth the ground are those hearing the word of God. The word of God is a seed. Amen? And the seed is planted into our earth. The same way that when our mothers and our fathers came together, the seed of the father was planted into the womb of our mother. That seed produced us in the natural. In the same way, the Word of God, when it comes to us, and we respond to that Word, how many know then we become impregnated with the life of God and a new creation? A new creation is born, and that is who we are. Oh, hallelujah. We might be in this physical flesh, but what's inside this flesh is deity. Can somebody say amen? Because, and, and so the scripture says in another place, in, in Romans 10, verse 17, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. James 1, 18 says, We are begotten by the word of truth, that we should be a first fruits of his creation. See, most Christians still do not have the concept of God being their father. Because they say that, that they see God as their adopted father. That God took a bunch of strangers and adopted them as his children. Problem of it is, each kind produces after its own kind. That concept leaves us as being flesh. As sinners. That's what we were when we came to Him. But when the Word of God come and penetrated into our hearts and our minds, it produced something new. And the old, He crucified on the cross. Aren't you glad? 
Now, I know we got a lot of that junk in our memory still. But we are a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And every day we walk with the Lord, we learn more of who we are. And it's only as we know who we are that we actually start to change. It isn't about trying to keep a bunch of rules. It isn't about trying. We got to see that what God wants, what he desires is really what we want and desire. But we have to be awakened to that truth. Amen? And so most Christians, when they, I probably should be reading all these scriptures. It would take me a long time. But how many have read the scriptures where we are adopted? And that is where people, when they, they, they read the book, and they, un, and they try to read the book with a Western mentality, when it is an Eastern culture, their, cult, their, cult, their culture adoption is different from our culture. In our culture, when I adopt someone else's children to be my own, that's our custom of adoption. Where the Hebrew custom of adoption is when the son becomes a mature age, which is 30, after being trained by the father in his occupation and business, at 30 years of age, then the firstborn son is placed as the head of the household. Where the father once was the head, at 30 years of age, the firstborn son, the elder son, he then is taken before all the elders of Israel, and he becomes head of of the household, head of the family, and head of the business. It's interesting, Jesus said, and this, by the way, was all in what happened. How many remember when Jesus uh, was baptized by John? There was a voice from heaven that was heard. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Jesus then went out and he preached, No man cometh unto the Father except by me. Then later, Matthew chapter 28, I believe it is, Jesus makes the statement, All power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Jesus had received his adoption. He was placed as the son and made head of father's house. Quite a bit different than how we view adoption. Because you see, Jesus was not someone else's kid. He was God's. Amen? Each kind brings forth after its own kind. Well, when you understand that, you understand that we are not strangers anymore. What we were died on the cross, and the Word of God came into us when we accepted Him what Jesus did, his spirit comes in through the word, impregnates us, and we become his offspring, his children. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as children, we have equal rights with Jesus as he was in his humanity. Amen. Amen. See, this is the thing about Jesus. On the one hand, he's God. But on the other hand, he's us. 
On the one hand, he is our father. On the other hand, he's our elder brother. 2,000 years ago, he was the only begotten of the Father. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Because no one else was his Son. When Adam sinned, Adam separated man from God. And the result was, man is just flesh. And flesh and blood produces flesh and blood. But Jesus was not born of flesh. He was born through the womb of a woman. And there he received his humanity. But the seed did not come from a man. An angel appeared unto Mary. And said, Thou shalt conceive, and the holy thing in thee shall be called the Son of God. Mary says, How can this be? I know not a man. It's impossible. I've had no relationship. No seed has been sown in me. But she believed the words of the angel. The angel said, The Holy Spirit shall overshadow thee. As Mary began to believe the words of that angel, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. As she began to surrender and believe what she was hearing, how many know she became pregnant? And as she became pregnant, she gave birth to Jesus, who had no natural father, but was born of a woman so that he could be a human while at the same time being God. In the same way, when we hear the message of what Jesus now has made us, how that he has taken what we once were, the old man, and nailed him to the cross, and how that he has come into our lives and we are born again like Jesus was born without a natural father we were birthed again only this time without a natural father God was our father how many how, how many are understanding what I'm saying his word the faith wasn't even in us. The faith was in, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When we allowed that faith to operate, when we surrendered and let that faith come inside of us and we started believing the word, then our life started to change. His grace started to come in and influence us. Influence us to do right. We start beginning to see ourselves not as a wicked person anymore but as a child of God wanting to do that which is right now so we struggle along the way because of our we allow the humanity to mess up in our thinking but when we finally surrender and believe and accept who he now says we are we are begotten birthed by the word so that today Jesus is not the only begotten Son of God. Today he is the firstborn of many brethren. Turn around and say hello brethren. Hello. Making us equal with Jesus in his expression. Now we will never be equal with him as God. Amen. He always is our Father. But in His expression, as children, we are equal with Him. Oh, praise the Lord. 
Now, if you really believe that, then you're not afraid to approach God with anything. Because you know you are His children and God wants to give you what's good for you. Amen. I probably have read these scriptures before, but I'm going to go ahead and read them again. Uh, I believe it's uh, Matthew chapter, uh, or no, Luke chapter 11. Starting in verse 9. It says, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish for a fish, will he give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, now notice, this is prior to the cross. I'm in, in Luke chapter 11. I started in verse 9, I'm in verse 13. Before Jesus came and changed the picture, how many know we were evil? The law showed that to us. Amen? Amen? We could not measure up and keep the law. But if you, and so at this point, they're evil. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Another place, it says, if you ask your father, Anything will he not give you good things? Now, how many know we don't get every single thing we ask for because sometimes we do ask amiss? You know, do kids get everything they ask of their parents? Don't the, if they're good parents, don't they know what the kid does not need? Now, eventually, every good thing that God has for us, we're going to receive. But we're going to be mature enough to handle it when he gives it to us. So, everything he has is laid up for us. But that doesn't mean we have everything at our disposal because we got to mature to that level that we can handle it. And what we can handle, He gives us. Amen? What we can handle, He gives us. And as we're faithful with what He gives us, He gives us more. So everything we ask for, we are going to receive. But first of all, we've got to learn who we are and what we want. We've got to learn. It's all about His kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All oh, praise the Lord. But we need the confidence to know that we approach God. He is our Father, and He wants to give us what we desire. But He wants it to be that which is good for us and what we're ready for. Amen. And so when you understand and believe and have that confidence, then when you're going through some things, and you're wondering, well, doesn't God answer my prayer? Well, yeah, He does. 
But first, you might have to mature a little bit to receive what he has. And how many have found that as you walked and grew in God, things that you've asked God for that you didn't receive way back when you first asked them, you ended up receiving them? Amen? God's not a man that he should lie, but he is a good parent. Oh, hallelujah. Now, our mother has not always been that good. The mother is the church. Can somebody say amen? Because some, because the mother has been trained a lot by religion and by the mind of man. But when mother is in union with father, how many know we have the greatest parents? Oh, praise the Lord. And you know, God is faithful. He doesn't leave the mother and create another one. He still works with the church. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. But the whole point is, God is our Father. Now we go to the next point there. Who art where? In heaven. In heaven. If our Father is in heaven, where are we? Each kind produces after his own kind. You know, Jesus said this. If you want to turn there, I'll go ahead and read it. I know that most of you have all heard this. But it's, it's nice to when you see it right there in front of you in the book, isn't it? John chapter 3, verse 13. It's interesting, we watched that movie, Heaven is for Real. And the little boy's initial experience was a near-death experience while he was in the hospital. But it's like once that realm was opened up to him, he just periodically would be caught up into it. So it wasn't something that happened while he was in an unconscious state. He'd be conscious and all of a sudden find himself in heaven. And he began to know things. Because you see, that's where we live we are citizens of heaven i'll get into that scripture in a moment but in john 3 13 jesus said this and no man hath ascended up to heaven but he that came down from heaven even the son of man which is in heaven now, at this point in time, Jesus is the only one in that realm because this, he has not yet went to the cross to redeem us. But notice he said, he came from heaven. And then he said, he was in heaven. And he was standing there talking to John. He wasn't off on another planet. He wasn't somewhere out beyond the Milky Way. He was standing right there here on the earth talking to John. And he said, I am in heaven. It is a spiritual dimension and state in which Jesus dwelt. Well, since he went to Calvary, and since he became our father, and because we are what he is, guess where we are? That same dimension. But we need to learn 
how to live in that dimension. Can somebody say amen? How we live in that dimension is, is as we have a relationship with God and we can hear his voice. He can bring things to our remembrance and we begin to walk in a different way of thinking than we do in the natural. Let the weak say they're strong. The doctor will tell you, you can't do this. You can't do that. You're weak. But there's a whole other part of you that can touch and heal the outward part of you. How many are hearing me? You don't need to stand in the healing line to receive your healing. You can grab a hold of the promises of God and believe them and begin to confess them. And as you do, start seeing your situation change. You may not see anything when you first started. That's why it comes by faith. But as you walk in faith, you start releasing the supernatural and you change your world. And as you change your world, how many know it's because you're living in another world? You're living in heaven. Your behavior on earth, you can't help but, be what, but behave a certain way. Somebody wrongs you, you want to get even. You want to get payback. Come on. But when you find you can control your emotions, you begin to change your world. And as you forgive, it releases you of all that turmoil. Amen. How many know what I'm talking about? And by that, you can grab a hold of the words that you were going to let come out of your mouth and you can contain them. You can begin to control your tongue. You can't do that by human strength. But when you see you're not a human, you're a son of God. You live in that same realm that God lives in. You live in heaven. Oh, praise the Lord. Let me go over to How many are getting something out of this this morning? I believe it's in Philippians verse uh, chapter 3 verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Oh, there's a lot of preaching here. I'm just going to have to deal with verse 20. Our conversation is in heaven. You look that up in the concordance, and in some translations, it's even translated that way, it is our citizenship is in heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven. We are citizens of another dimension, of the dimension that actually changes this dimension, the earth. Yes. See, what the earth actually is in the Bible, it's simply the visible world. The visible world. In Colossians uh, chapter uh, 3, I think it is, in verse 6, no, 1. Ah, let me, let me turn there. So I get it right.
Colossians. It is right after Philippians. And it's... Yes, yeah, verse 16, verse, chapter 1. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Now, if you look at this scripture, it'll break down what heaven is and what earth is. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible. Well, which part do you think the visible is? The earth. The earth speaks of that which is naturally seen. That which is material. Heaven is invisible. It is a realm of thought. And it is out of that realm that things are created. How many know just outside of God, how many know a thought come to a man by the name of Karl Marx? He wrote a book called The Communist Manifesto. Somebody read that book his name was Stalin. Russia had a revolution and what was merely thought in a man's head became a physical reality. Now how many know the thought that was planted in his head came from the evil one? Because how many know God does not operate that way? But in the same way, God takes his thoughts and he puts them into our minds. And as we believe him and put them into operation, then those thoughts then create the reality we see in the seen world. Amen. Amen. How many know that's how the kingdom of God is going to be established in the earth? And those thoughts initially come to us through the book. But then he unveils through letting the scripture interpret scripture. He unveils what the book is really saying. As we then begin to hear it and believe it, and then act upon it, it starts making a change in our lives and in the world around us. That's why in Isaiah 66 it says, Heaven is my throne. Earth is my footstool. The seen world only responds to the invisible world. And we are citizens of that invisible world. And by lining up with God as his children, how many know we start making a difference in the world around us? Oh, hallelujah. That sonship and knowing that we're here to his, that God is our Father gives us the confidence to know what we pray and ask for, he will do. The analogy he already made, well, you do the same. Your children ask you for a fish. You don't give a stone. You know, well, today it's a little bit different if, you're, if your child asks for Cheerios. Do you, uh, <laughs> do you, 
Do you go? Do you give him a box of rocks? I mean, you know, you being parents, I mean, you're looking out for the kids. Uh, you don't want him to eat a bunch of junk. But if he asks you, you know, you know, mom, I haven't eaten this in a while. Could you get this? Don't parents usually like to? Well, in the same way, you can ask God, and you can have a have a confidence that what you're asking, you're going to get. Now, again, a lot has to do with maturity. God is a wise parent. When you are able, like if you if you're if you're a three year old. And you ask God for a brand new car. I'm speaking. He ain't going to give you a brand new car because you ain't able to drive it. Now, when you're 16. And you ask God for a car. I'm again. You know, then. As you're able and responsible. He's going to give it to you. That's the way it is we receive from God. But we still know that he hears us. And he wants to bless us. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Let's go back to Matthew 6 and I'm going to bring this to an end. And I'm going to be done before 1230. They were talking about last night. They said, you know, uh, one of the guys that was invited to preach. He said, "Well, now you ain't going to preach pre preach in here unless you can unless you can preach half the Bible." Well, I got up. I said, "Well, that leaves me out. It takes me hours sometimes to get through a couple scriptures." <laughs> oh, praise the Lord! Matthew chapter six. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed means committed to a one purpose, dedicated to that purpose. You know what God's purpose is? Us. We're his purpose. He is totally dedicated to that purpose. And our purpose is Him. Oh, praise the Lord. But His name is hallowed. Needs to be honored, respected. By the way, so does ours. Then He goes on to say, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. What did Jesus say in one place? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What is his kingdom? Basically, what his will is in our life. We are his kingdom. He is the king. And then we and when we understand who we are, we find ourselves in him sitting on that same throne. Amen. Ruling over our natural desires. Can somebody say amen? Yes. And so our concern is the will of God. Will you pray and seek after his will? How many know you're going to find it? You're going to find it. Oh, praise the Lord. Know God as your Father. Pray. Then the, the, then the next priority in prayer is what His will is. His kingdom. And I'm going to end with this one. Give us this day our daily bread 
Don't be praying for things way off in the future. Praying for things that isn't what you need this day. Does it matter whether natural things or spiritual things? Give us this day our daily bread. Well, I'm going to pick this up at that point next time. Praise the Lord.